1 Corinthians 12, um, and I'm going to skip down to verse 4. He said, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for what? The profit of? Oh. Yeah, every one of us, man. The building up of the body, right? So he says, he goes on to say, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. Now we're on to this part in verse 9. To another, faith. By the same Spirit. And then we're going to get into talking about healing next week. But but faith by the same Spirit. How is that a gift? Now, if you think about this, there's different kinds of faith. Okay? There's, there's saving faith that, 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 that's talked about through the Word of God. And I can give you tons of scriptures for that. But this is a little bit different. And real quick, I just want to read something to you. It's one of the best... Definition that I found on 1 Corinthians 12, 9. I, I looked it up in the Greek and all these other places. And this, this was probably the best one that I found in commentaries. It says it's the ability to have a vision for what God wants to be done. And to confidently believe that it will be accomplished in spite of circumstances and appearances to the contrary. The gift of faith transforms vision into reality, yeah. right? That's the supernatural gift of faith. Now, there's a saving faith that, that, that's given to, it's put in every single person, right? The ability to believe that there's something great, that there's a Jesus, there's a God out there that loves me, that, that, that sent his son to die for me, that's saving faith. John 3, 16, we know, said that, that what's it say? Who knows? What is it? There you go. They're saving faith. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says it's a, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should vote. This is saving faith. But today we're going to talk about the gift of faith. It's different than that. And, and we read it's the ability to have a vision. When Dave stood in this room, when Maya was MIA, right? Um, when Dave stood in this room and said, I see her. He was speaking through the gift of faith. He had a vision of her here because he believes that that's what God wanted to be done. And he confidently believed that it was going to be accomplished in spite of us having to go from dope house to dope house to dope house to try to get her back. And she rejected it. Yeah. He had a supernatural faith in the midst of that that didn't allow us to quit. It was for the benefit of, of, of all. Because Alicia was struggling and, and she's weeping and she has a heart for this young lady. And why does she keep rejecting? But you had that, that vision that confidently believed what God wanted. And he knew God wanted her here because God had begun to work in Maya. Right? He began to change in her, man. And, and, and that was a gift of faith. Because a lot of people, sometimes even in my own mind, it was like, oh, man. Are we chasing, are we chasing something that is impossible? I even made the comment to Alicia. I don't chase people. Like, I love them, I follow the Holy Spirit, but I don't chase everybody around that doesn't want to serve God. But there was just this, this faith in her for Maya, accompanied with Dave's faith. And, and, and man, it just, it was contagious to the point where she's here. Not today, right the second, but, but she's here. So in 1 Corinthians 9, 12, 9, it says to another, faith, the empowerment of faith. There's a Greek word, heteros, man, and it means another of a different kind. Right? If you think of it that way. Another of a different kind. So what kind of faith is this? It's another kind. It's another of a different kind. It's not that saving faith, but it's something different. It starts a new group of gifts in this list in the Bible. So faith starts a second group of gifts that empowers the church to overcome the works of the enemy, man. Yeah. It empowers the church to be able to walk through anything that we face knowing that God's good enough and he's big enough and, and he loves us enough to be able to help us get through no matter what we're facing, Absolutely. right? It, it's something that, that causes people to have a consistency in their walk with the Lord, right? I believe it's so needed, man, because there's been so many times in my life that, that God allows me to minister through the gift of faith. Right, And if I didn't have that gift of faith, if I didn't pray for that, if I didn't earnestly desire that and, and then seek that out, man, I'm afraid this ministry wouldn't be half of what, of, of, of what it's become because we would have put God in this little box about this big and said, God, you're good. And I read about you in Sunday school, but, but I don't think you can heal this addiction. I don't think you're bigger than a doctor that said I'm an addict and, and I'm bipolar and I'm this and I'm that and the other, man. And, and we just don't believe God for great things. And sadly, 
I know many people in the church that are that are in that position, man. And and I've seen it happen to where it's transformed lives. We were in a Methodist church one time. I gotta share the story. And this lady was crippled. Both her legs were palsied up. Right? She didn't walk, so she wanted to go to the altar. All of a sudden, there wasn't much gift of faith in this church. They were saving faith. They wanted people to get saved. But outside of that, they weren't praying for no healing. They weren't praying for nothing great. They weren't believing God to bring the finances. It was just, they were struggling. It was a little dying church. <laughs> and I remember they, they carried this woman up because she wanted prayer. She had her hair up in the beehive. It was like an old school, uh, old school church from, from down <laughs> south. And yeah, she had that beehive. She had like 847 bobby pins in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they could believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Because if she started getting excited, man, those things would have been crying out everywhere, man. It'd be like World War II in there. Uh, she had this big beehive who carried her down to the front of the church, man, and God literally healed her legs right there in front of our faces, man. Um, and, and I remember Jenny used to tell the story all the time, man. She said, wait till I go home and tell my, tell my husband he's a sinner, man. Let him tell me my God's not real now. Amen. Right? But it took a supernatural gift of faith coming into that church. To be able to believe God. And she had to all of a sudden receive the, another kind, another of a different kind of faith to be able to say, pick me up, carry me down to that altar. I'm going to get prayed for him. Yes. And I've seen it happen many different times. And I've watched God work tremendously, tremendously when we seek out these gifts that Paul told us to do, which is why I'm trying to teach them to you. Because just as much as I can in the time that we have, because I want you to be able to pray for these things. To earnestly desire that you have the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and the gift of faith. And, and, and how you'll see when I get to the end of this list, how they all work together and how they all flow together very powerfully, man. Now, but again, this is the second group of gifts that it starts talking about that, that empowers the church. Um, this group of things that we're going to talk about faith and healing, it concerns direct confrontation in spiritual warfare. And, and, and I wasn't even going to say that, but when we came in here this morning, honestly, uh, all morning long, I've been in kind of like a fighting mood. And I don't mean like physical fighting. I don't want to argue with Alicia about dumb stuff and get sleep on the couch. That's not the kind of fighting I'm talking about. But I feel the need, man. I feel stirred in my heart uh, to have direct confrontation. I was reading something last night. I got a book that, that uh, from a pastor that I really like. He has a new book out. I started to read it last night. And uh, one of the first things it said was, was that you, you, you can't change what you don't confront, right? I, I, I can't change and have greater faith and pray to God for this great faith if I don't confront where there may be doubts or where there may be concerns or where, 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 where the problem may seem bigger. And I've magnified this problem to be a giant. And it's not a giant, even if it is a giant. God's given me stones to slay the giant. So right. what am I going to believe and what am I going to stand on? But God's allowed me to do this, man, yeah. in, in ministry, and I'm thankful for it, and it drives me nuts at the same time. But when I'm in places like this or when I'm counseling with people, man, the Lord lets me feel and, and sense what they're feeling and sensing. I, I don't even know the correct term for that, man, but uh, it brings me to tears. It makes me weep at times. I'll be in church services, and I'll feel an overwhelming sense of suicide or depression, and I'll speak that out of people's responded or, or pain or whatever it is, man. And I really feel that this morning. I really feel that this morning, man, there's people in, in huge spiritual warfare. Some of them don't even know it yet. That's really what the problem is. But when we look at faith, the gift of faith, it concerns a direct confrontation in spiritual warfare. Dave was confronting the enemy that was destroying Maya's life by saying, no, I see her here. I see her with her hands lifted and successful and serving God. He might not have said those exact words, but what he was saying was, I have the faith to believe greater than the enemy that all he thinks he won because he's out there doing her thing. I have great, I'm confronting him and I'm confronting the lies that could come into each and every mind and say, no, nope, God's bigger than that. My God, who I serve, this my Abba Father is bigger than that. Bigger than any lost mindset. Bigger than anything, man. But we have to believe God for these great things. So, so again, what is the gift of faith? It's the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit upon a believer. And it empowers you, him or her, to trust fully that God will act in a supernatural manner at a particular time. That's what it means. So I have faith. It doesn't mean if it didn't happen right away, you don't have faith. Right? I, and, I, and I want you to hear that. I want to stress that today. It doesn't mean if it doesn't happen right away, you don't have faith. And I'm going to share some examples just so you can get it. For three years in a row, I went to the same church. We called the Red Roof Church. It was a big assembly of God church down south, man. I think Shane's probably been there on, on the choir before, man. But 
We went to this church and this kid came up front as I went up as I was preaching and 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 he's palsied up, he's never walked, he's got a brother that's even in worse shape, and he flies down, he we're singing, and he's back there weeping and praising God. He started to build his faith, man, and his supernatural faith in this young man that couldn't communicate or or, or do a whole lot began to rise up to where he was just in tears, and he would fly down to the altar, man. I remember the first year he did it, he flew down to the altar, and I'm looking at his dad like someone tell me what, what he wants prayer for. And he said, he believes God because you're up here talking about how he changed your life and transformed you. He's believing God that he's going to get up out of this hot, out of this wheelchair and walk. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, you got to help me now. I just talked you up so big, Lord. And, you know, this man has never walked in his life, but I do believe that God's a healer. God's healed me. Like, I'm not supposed to be walking right now. So I know God's a healer. I've seen it. I, I, I've watched it, man. I was in a service one time when I went to Teen Challenge. My hep C antibodies were through the roof. And I remember I was in a church service, and the pastor went, someone over here just got healed of hep C. And I was like, you know what I mean? I was over in that corner, and I went and got tested, obviously, when I got when I graduated and everything. And my, my levels were 100% normal for the next three years, everything I did, man. So I know that God's a healer, and I know that I've had faith to believe in my path was a great man of faith and believed God for that. But when this man came down, and, and this was a this was big, man. And I'm like, all right, Lord. And we prayed for him. And I prayed everything I knew from Genesis to Revelation, man. I prayed yeah. all of it. I mean, I laid every scripture out there. I was holding God in his word, man. God, you said it. We're doing it. And we believe. God, we believe. We believe. God, we're praying for this young boy. He believes. He just flew down here in the front of this church. And, and, and all the choirs looking at me like, what in the world do we do? The church is looking at me like, what in the world do we do? And I said, we're going to pray and believe God. Just like I believe God for all 30 of you men to stand on this stage. Because nobody else thought you could ever change That's right. but at a particular time the, 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 the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit was manifested in, in a crazy supernatural manner and at that particular time each one of those men with me experienced the freedom experienced change breaking and this young man was no different it was up there he wasn't a drug addict but he needed prayer he needed, he needed God to be bigger than this and we prayed and nothing happened he's trying he stood up and one leg was hooked behind the other like this. It was about, his hips weren't even. So they were about four inches shorter. And nothing happened. He sat back down in that chair. And I'll be honest, we stayed at that church till the next service because it was right down the road. And I laid in that sanctuary and prayed for hours and wept, prayed, asked God, Lord, am I called to do this? Am I not hearing you right? Even, man, you want to talk about confronting spiritual warfare, man. I went through it. And I was asking God, God, what's wrong? And, and I, I don't understand. And I've been told before, if, if anything is wrong with you, it's simply because you don't have faith. I mean, I can tell you person after person after person after person after person in the Bible that did great and mighty things and died of sickness and battled this and struggled with, with things that, that Paul said, I have a thorn in my side. He had all faith. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. But God said, I'm not letting it go from you, even though he prayed about it. But, but this man, I was really struggling. And about two weeks later, I'm going to be honest, it was, it was one of the roughest two weeks. I questioned my calling. I questioned all of it. And about two weeks later, we get a phone call from that boy's dad. He said, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like... What's that? He said, my son is 23 years old. He's never stood in front of anything because his legs are palsied and his hips are about out of whack about four inches. He said he just stood up in front of the sink for the first time ever to brush his own teeth and his hips grew out and his feet wow. are perfectly normal. And I start bawling on the phone. I get on the radio and I'm like, hey, everybody on the choir. I start telling his testimony if they understood me. I was just like mumbling stuff and then praising God and crying at the same time. But I was like, whoa, the next year we go to this church. And I remembered that, that the whole church is looking at me and I'm like, oh, man, here we go again with that warfare. And I'm like, God, okay, you're, you're man. And sure enough, we start singing, start preaching. Here he comes, flying down the aisle. Back to the front, same thing. Flipped them, let things open, and looked at me. And I'm like, and we were up on a big stage, and I walked out. I said, okay, I'm with a totally different group of guys. They know nothing about this story last year. And so I'm like, all right, here we go. And we start praying for him, and we start believing, man. And he's holding on to our arms, and he's trying to take a step. And, and, and nothing happened right there that we saw. Nothing happened. And he sat down. And about two weeks later, we get a phone call, and it was another testimony of things that were starting to work in his body that didn't work before, man. The third year I go back, he comes up front. Man, here he comes again. Same, same exact situation. He's falling. He's hearing the word of God. His faith is being built. He flies down that aisle. I'm like, this. at this point, I'm thinking, this man has more faith than I do. 
Like he was humbling me as he came up front again and again. And I said, okay, man, another group of guys that don't know the story. We laid hands on him. He prayed. We, we prayed and he prayed and his family prayed. And that young man ended up walking around this whole church. It was stadium style seating. The seats went up like this. And he walked, it was kind of like a diamond shape. He walked up this way. I probably took 40 minutes, man. And I laid on the stage and bawled the whole time. I didn't talk. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't keep the audience entertained. I, I couldn't do anything but lay there and weep before God. Because I said, God, how much of a fight these past three years has this been to where when they told me I was going to this church, I'm like, don't you want to call somebody else to go? And they would call and request me specifically to come to this church. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> It was this battle of, of, of having this faith, and God was teaching me, right? He was showing me what it is. So even if it didn't happen right there in the moment that I physically saw something, God was still doing the work and responding to this supernatural faith, man. And God ended up letting that young man walk when he was never supposed to walk ever, man. So it's a supernatural working of the Holy Spirit upon a believer that empowers him to fully trust God to act supernaturally at a particular time. It might be to not give up. It might be to feel like you want to walk out of here. You want to give up. But God empowers you through the Holy Spirit in that moment to have enough faith to say, you know what, God? These trials aren't made to break me. They're made to build me. That takes a supernatural faith to trust and believe that, man. It absolutely does. So the gift of faith often operates mostly, but often operates um, uh, in association with the other gifts. Right? You believe God for great things. If I don't have supernatural faith, when God speaks that thing to Jody or to me, even if it's God, God loves you so much, He's not just going to speak to you about, about someone dead raising up. And He's going he's gonna, he's gonna to be that still, man, go get that cake now. Josh, go do this to your children now. Go have this talk now. Right? Man, don't give up now. Man, and, and, and somewhere, Man, there's a word of knowledge, there's a word of wisdom, something God brings up, and I have to believe that it's God. And I have to believe that he's speaking to my heart, man. And, 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 and the gift of faith empowers you to trust a rhema word of God. There's logos and there's rhema. Logos is, is, is one of my favorite things, that, that man, my favorite apps on the phone, logos Bible software, right? And it's breaking down the word of God in studies and commentaries and Greek and Hebrew and lexicons and all this different stuff. But there's a rhema word, man, a word that God gives specifically to you in a moment. And you have to have faith to believe that. When God said, move north, that was a rainbow word, man, that God was giving me. And he lined it up with, with the word of God in Nehemiah. I had to have great faith to believe that when I came here, God was going to do what he said he was going to do. Now, I didn't pass the test very well at first. I struggled for a year. I fought him for a long time, man. And I was like, oh, man, you want to talk about warfare? I went and told my pastor, I feel rebellious right now. He's like, why? I'm like, I don't even know. I just go home and I feel like I'm being rebellious. I don't know why. And he said, man, because God's speaking to your heart, but... But you're going to have to believe him for, for yeah. great, great yeah. things, man. And I was like, ah. But, but a lot of times, man, God will speak that word to you. And you have to trust him. You have to believe him for this great, great thing, man. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So the, the believer may operate in the gift of faith without realizing it at times because he or she is simply following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And what a great example we had from Jody today about that, man. So the gift of faith empowers the believer to speak with authority. Right? Again, I'm not trying to keep bringing that up. But, but Dave, that was a great example. He was speaking with the authority. He wasn't just saying it passively. He was speaking that word with authority. There was something behind it that I couldn't be like, yeah, but Dave, you don't understand where she's at. I've been to the home where she's at, and I see what she's doing. There was an authority where you say, yes, sir, I see it too. Right? There's that spiritual authority that backs it, that you just know that it's right, man. Mark 11, 23 said, he shall have whatever he says. Yes. Why? Because there's authority in that. And it's, the Holy Spirit is leading him to say that. That's why I joke and I say, you can't go lay hands on a Cadillac and God just give it to you. That's not the kind of authority it's saying. But when God leads you in a direction and you follow him and you speak that out in, in, through this gift of faith, this, this another of a different kind of faith, when you speak it out, it says he shall have whatever he says. So why do you think we speak life over y'all? And, and, and if you talk negative in any way, we put you on a word fast. Why? Because you're going to have what you say. Whether you're speaking the things of God and through the Spirit or you're speaking the negativity, you will reap what you sow that way. That's right. Uh, he shall have whatever he said. i got to have great faith to believe that. 
I gotta have great faith to believe when God says you're gonna have national influence and he says these things. Why do I say it? Not because I want to look foolish or try to try to cast some big unrealistic vision, but because man, I believe that when God put it on my heart, he doesn't speak to me just to just to hear himself talk. Exactly. <laughs> he speaks so things can happen and, and he can be glorified and great faith can come about. Job 22, 28, it says, You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Right? You shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. If we have this gift of faith and we speak with this authority, man, we have scriptures right here that show what's going to happen. And it's amazing, man. And again, you might operate in the gift of faith without realizing it because you're just following the Holy Ghost. But all of a sudden you begin to realize, whoa, man, that there's, this is a gift that God's imparting into me, man. So again, there's different kinds of faith. And, and, and I, wanna, I want you to know the difference so you know when God's using you in a mighty way, man. Again, saving faith. It's a faith that comes through the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. You can read about it in Acts 16.31, right? And, and, and you can see it's the faith that brings somebody into the family of God. The faith that, 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 that man, God starts tugging at your heart. You respond and you, you weep your way to Calvary. You accept the gift of salvation. You know, and I say this often. I say this often. I know people, I mean, think about this for a minute with me. There's individuals that, that fight me on this and they don't believe that the gifts of the Spirit are for today. Even though I've seen it I, 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 often and all the time. And I know what's real and what's not, man. I, I, I was a professional at finding real from fake back in the day, man. And it's no different now. You know what's real and you know what's fake, man. But, but I think about this. Somebody is in church. And the Holy Spirit starts to tug at their heart. Their heart starts to beat fat. They get that lump in their throat. They come down or they pray or they do whatever they do. And we pray and accept Jesus into their heart. They believe that's what they're saying is they believe that, that, that he came from heaven, was born of a virgin, lived 33 and a half years, was beaten beyond. You can barely recognize him as a man, his own mama. Right? Could barely recognize him as a man. He was beaten so brutally. Died, was buried, rose again, man. Went to hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, mm -hmm. rose again, man. All these things that he did. And we're saying, we believe not only that, but that every wrong thing I've ever done in my life, every sin stain, every failure that I've ever had in my life yeah. is going to be instantly thrown into the sea of forgetfulness where mm -hmm. nobody, well, well, God will never remember it again. He don't even Amen. think about it. Amen. He don't even remember it unless I'm praying and asking him for forgiveness more than one time. And I believe, I believe a pastor told me one time, he said, will you quit reminding God of what he's already forgotten about? That's right. And I was praying out loud. And I was like, what? And he's like, you keep weeping and saying, God, forgive me. And he's like, God, it's already in the sea of forgetfulness. You keep reminding him of what you did. Move on. He forgives you. It's yeah. over. It's, it's gone. And I'm like, Man, I couldn't let it go. Yeah. It was gone in his eye. So people believe that all this that I'm saying, enough to where they say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. They believe that. <laughs> but they don't believe that the Spirit of God that lives in believers can empower them to walk out in faith and to speak and, 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 and to hear words from the Lord from heaven and, and to bring healing. Like It blows my mind. It, 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 I can't even comprehend how you can believe one without the other. But there's this kind of saving faith that God gives man. And, 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 and the fruit of faith is the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Galatians 5.22. You know, you know it's a growing faith. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not fruits where you say, I got these three and these four. Nah, I don't got them at all. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy. And one builds upon the other. You can't have joy without love. You can't have peace. And it goes right down the line, man. So there's that fruit of faith, man, that, that begins to come out. It's a growing faith that develops when you abide in Christ and you abide in His Word. Then there's the gift of faith, right, which is, which is different. Again, it empowers you to proclaim the Word of the Lord boldly and with authority. Peter, Peter was saved. But he wasn't sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit yet. So he was saved. But he didn't have this great gift of faith yet. So when Jesus is going to the cross, he denies him three times. He did the exact thing that Jesus said would happen and he didn't even realize it. Right? He was sealed, but he wasn't saved. Then all of a sudden, Jesus comes back. The whole night goes to heaven. He, comes, he reveals himself to him several times. Says, peace be with you. Reveals himself. Peter goes up in the upper room and gets filled with the Holy Spirit. What was the difference all of a sudden? The same man that doubted him that said, nope, I don't know that guy. Incurred. The same man all of a sudden was empowered to proclaim the word of the Lord 
boldly and with authority. His weakness became his weapon. That's right. Yeah. I want you to hear that. His weakness became his weapon. Yes. A lot of y'all struggled for so long on, on your weaknesses because people have pointed them out and talked to you about them. When, when, when you have this gift of faith, man, your weakness becomes your weapon. Why did I why was I a college dropout? Because I was scared to death. I mean to death to speak in front of people. I was in a room of about this big with about this many people, maybe double, maybe about 35 people, something like that. And I was so nervous that I said, I'll just fail and flunk out of college. I walked out and never went back again a day in my life, ever. Right? Because that, but, but when God came in and supernaturally began to fill me, I began to, get, began to ask him for the faith. Then he began to speak to my heart and said, I have a calling on your life, son. And, and, and it's to get up and proclaim the word. And I'm like, mm, don't you remember college? How'd that work out? <laughs> and but God gave me the ability and y'all heard the story at times man but the first time I ever preached by myself um, I was so scared literally I was shaken and I was physically sick I was running to the bathroom man and I'm like oh my gosh I can't do this and we were visiting this church that we helped build it was huge and nice and beautiful and I'm like I can't do it, Lord. You know I'm not good at this. And it seemed like they prayed like four praise songs, man. Probably like a half hour. And it felt like 13 seconds. Like, you can't be done yet. I'm not even ready to see it. Like I was so in my head. And I gave the altar call and I walked back and I put my nose in the corner of the wall, stared at the wall and gave an altar call with my back to the church. And I, that's what I did. But I started, I started to speak to my heart in that. And I'm like, oh, man. And, and I turned around. And when I turned around, it's the only time this has ever happened in my life. Every single person in that church probably... Probably about 250 people at the time. Every single one, even the sound guy, was in the altar on their knees weeping before God. Oh, and God showed me, I've given you through this gift of God. You're, you're being obedient. It doesn't mean we won't struggle sometimes and question in our minds. And, and he said, but I've given you this so you can speak the word of God boldly and with authority. And authority means in a way that it, it expels the lies. It, it speaks truth. People, they take it. They believe it, man. And that's what God gave me. And that's what the gift of faith does, man. And so I, I, I slowly began to be able to trust God for that. And he grew my faith. And he let me see so many great things, man. From, from I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of crazy, crazy physical healings, man. That was documented through a doctor and through different things. Amazing, man. What God has done through somebody that was such a failure in their life that I couldn't even, I, I, I couldn't even have a bank account. I couldn't even, I couldn't even find a place to stay for more than a month. I couldn't manage my own debt. I couldn't manage nothing. And all of a sudden, God began to give me this word. Give me this word that I can speak, man. In the face of great danger and shipwreck, Paul received a rhema word from God concerning the safety of the men on his ship. And he was able to speak with authority, and it happened according to his word. If you look at Acts 27, verses 21 through 26, let me read it to you real quick. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me, you should have listened to me, and you should have not loosed from Cretan and have gained this harm and loss. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer. He says, For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar, and God hath given all them, all them that sail with thee. Right? Wherefore, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told to me. We must be cast upon a certain island. Paul stood up boldly and said, This is what God said. This is what an angel of the Lord said. Man, and, and here it is. And he spoke truth to his men. It was powerful. And it happened exactly like he said it would happen, man. It was authority. There, you, you, in, in the Bible, we see Elijah that proclaimed a time of famine through the gift of faith. Elijah spoke with authority before the king. And it happened, again, according to his word. Dave spoke with authority before Satan and people that were doubting. And it happened according to his word. Right? We see Elijah in 1 Kings 17, 1. He said, there, there, there won't be dew, there won't be rain these years, but according to my word. Yeah. Now listen to that. There's, there won't be dew or rain. It's not even going to get damp outside to the point where the grass is wet. There's not going to be dew or rain at my word. Right? And it didn't, and, 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 and it didn't rain. Who was Elijah? This great spiritual giant that we can't even fathom being like, right? No. It says Elijah was an ordinary man just like us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. An ordinary man just like us. Yeah. 
Jesus says he was tempted in every way. We don't have a high priest that can't sympathize with us. Because he was tempted in every way just like us. It, God's not asking us to do something that you have to be some. So you have to be in the throne room every single. You just have to be praying and saying, God, build my faith. Give me this gift of faith so that when I hear you, I can speak it and I know what happens. Listen, man, do we need that for our families? Yes. Yeah. I've done it both ways. I spoke with timidity and, 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 I, and I've not heard the voice of God because, oh, man, I don't want to cause friction. I don't want to. What if someone don't follow? What if, what if, what if, what if? Or I can say, I've spent time with God. This is what he said, and I know it's going to happen according to my word That's because right. God's given me a gift of faith, and, and it's biblical right here. So, man, and James 5, 17 says, it rained not on the earth by the space of three and, a half, three, three and a half years, three years and six months. It didn't rain according to his word because he heard from the Lord. He spoke it, man. You know, you can proclaim whatever when God gives you this gift of faith. Proclaim the Lord's supernatural provision. Elijah in 1 Kings 17 Right, he was fed by ravens. If you look at verse 4, 2 through 16, but look at verse 4, he was fed by raven. The gift of faith led Elijah to wait for ravens to feed him and to be provided for by a widow woman. Right? This gift of faith allowed him to stand up when this woman had nothing else, man, and be able to say, Yes, I need why? Because he knew he was going to provide. God, Elijah knew God was going to not leave her without. And him taken, he knew that if he acted with authority, and what did the woman do? There you go. Yeah. Why? Now you go into a, a, a mama's house that has kids. I'm not a mama, so I can't speak to this. And you have just a tiny little bit of food, just enough for one last meal. And some, some guy you never met before really comes in there and says, hey, give me all that. I'm like, okay. Better get out of here. That's one of my baby first, you know what I'm saying? But he spoke with such authority, man. And he spoke the word of God and he proclaimed it. And he had so much faith that this woman just said, yes, here you go, man. Elijah went to the brook Cherith. He had to, he had to believe God that he was leading them there. Again, Cherith means separation. Now, it's a drought. It's the middle of a drought for three and a half years. God takes him out there and says, can't by this brook Cherith, by this stream. Knowing that in a drought, streams dry up. Right, Dream, streams dry up, but he waited there, recorded this gift of faith, and every day he said, All right, man, and this bird flew over and dropped him down some meat twice a day, and he looked at that stream that kept flowing, and he said, God, my 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 faith is in you that provides that brook, not in the brook, because the brook's drying up. And if the brook's drying up and I can see it drying up, and this is my only source of water, you might start to get a little bit nervous if you're in a desert and you have to have water to live. And you're watching the banks recede and get smaller and smaller. But Elijah trusted that God sent him there. And it was God that was providing the water. And it says the brook dried up. But when it dried up, God spoke differently to Elijah. And he went on, man. If you think of Jesus in the coin in the fish's mouth. So many places I could tell you. But the gift of faith empowers you and me, the believer, to have assurance, to be sure. That God's supernatural provision and His supernatural protection is there in times of need. Right? That's what the gift of faith does. I want you to think about for just a moment how this ministry operates. I want you to think about it, man. From a, I've had businessmen say, you are the biggest idiot that ever walked the face of the earth. <laughs> Because you, you, you're not getting insurance from people and you're not charging them monthly. And you, you meet, you've met at one time, I was like 90 people per week that, that I was having meetings with and meeting. And, yada, and he's like, you could be making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And I'm like, man, but this is what God said to do That's right. in the way that he said to do it. And we've never had to borrow money here. We, we, God always provides. He always provides. He always provides. And we do what he said to do and he provides. Two years ago, God said, don't fundraise. And I was like, we're a nonprofit. He said, don't fund I don't want you to sell a t-shirt. I don't want you to sell a wristband. I don't want nothing. Do not fundraise whatsoever. And I'm like, maybe three years ago now it was. And, uh, and I didn't. I didn't sell a shirt. I didn't put a literature table out one time, and we raised more money that oh, he, God said, focus on people. And I focused on people. We raised more money that year than we ever have since Family Care has been in existence wow. without even putting forth any effort or asking or telling anybody that we're a nonprofit and, and we don't accept that kind of stuff. We go by donations because God has the ability. He empowers us. He empowers us to have assurance of God's provision. Uh, and I'm not saying anything about, uh, I, I've learned, I, for every mistake you've made, I've probably made 10. 
And, and, and I, I've learned sometimes the hard way. But even with the documentary that came out, God said, don't take any money from it. And there was even some opposition against that. And, and God said, just use it and make sure everywhere you go, you can say, this is to build souls only. And we've been able to do that. And Caitlin, you're here because of that, Amen. that movie yeah. that, that your brother happened to watch. And they tell you about, man. It's a, and he was in uh, France or wherever he was. I mean, yeah. United Kingdom. I mean, how amazing is that, man? What if I would have been disobedient and got $50,000 or $100,000? Whatever, man. We might not have Caitlin right here in this room. So it allows us to be able to have assurance that God's going to provide. God's going to protect. When that need arises, God's great and he's there, man. Are y'all understanding this? Yeah. Yeah. It, it empowers us to trust the miraculous. Yeah. It empowers us to trust for miraculous provision of God in a way not usually seen. Right? In a way not usually seen. I don't even know if Dave knows this right now, but, but we've been praying because all the things that we didn't know were wrong with the building where when we, we didn't know the pipes were bust. We were just going to build a sanctuary. And, I mean, our plan, we were already going to be in there for a month by now. You know what I'm saying? I was already dancing up on that stage twice, man. I mean, I thought we were good, and then we didn't know that the sewer line was going to be broken, backing up and leaking and seeping and popping out of the whole like, rocket like, We didn't know that stuff was going to happen, and we... We didn't have any way to know that, man. So it just started happening. But but in my prayer time, I keep saying, okay, God, this is money we didn't plan on. This is money we didn't plan on. This is money we didn't plan on. This, 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 this. Here, here. Out here, over there. Man, out <laughs> everywhere. And man, I was praying, man. And, and, and we, I met with somebody this past week. And Alyssa texted me yesterday, man, and shows me it's a $5,000 anonymous donation. Just came in the mail. And it's like, God, you just provide. You just provide. I guarantee you if we calculate all that up, man, that covers everything of, of the added stuff that we needed. I guarantee you that it does, man. So, man, God's faithful to provide. I could have stressed. I could have worried. I could have doubted. And been like, oh, Lord, I just need to put everything on hold. This isn't your will. It's jackal's not your will. Everything's coming against it. Or I could say, man, God, no, you spoke this. And I spoke this because you led me to speak this. It is happening, man. And thank God we're finding the problem before it all gets finished. we got to tear it all back out of there, man. But when we have faith to believe, man. And God, God miraculously provides in those moments. So the gift of faith empowers the believer again to have full assurance that God will act according to his word. Look at Hebrews 11, the hall of faith. Yeah. Right? Look at Hebrews 11. The gift of faith entrusts, it, it, it trusts God to do things not usually seen. Yeah. So I want you to think about your life right now. I want you to think about your circumstances. And I want to think about where you're at in your walk, man. And, and when we pray and we ask God for this gift of faith, it, you'll, your trust will begin to grow and begin to grow. And your view of God will begin to get bigger yes. and bigger and bigger. And you start to believe and trust God for things that are not usually seen. This isn't usually seen. What I see right here in front of me isn't usually seen. You usually don't have people that's been in church for a long time, like Dave and Jody, man, and serving God. You usually don't see them, and I've been doing this for 15 years. You usually don't see them so active in the lives of individuals like we were. You usually don't see that, man, right? And, and you don't go to any rehab. I've never been to any rehab ever where everybody's heads aren't down and, and visitors come and people dress nice, man. They're not like down and, and bashful and dodging or running to their rooms, man. I've never seen this before. But you get here and we say, God, I'm trusting that we can put men and women and, and staff and former drug addicts and people that's never done drugs and all of us right in the same room and we can worship together. There can be chiefs of police and police officers in a room where there's people that could have warrants and we're all worshiping together and celebrating together. God, that's faith to believe you for things that are not usually seen. It's amazing, man. And, and not only not only do they not, it's not that they don't know, they know. They're just saying we're here to worship together and this is amazing, man. By faith, Noah did what? Nothing. 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 He was warned of things not yet seen. Yeah. Hear me. Noah, God said, Noah, you haven't ever seen this before, but there's a rain and a great flood coming. This is my words. Yeah. Never seen rain before. And he's like, okay, I'll build a boat. Because <laughs> God said, build a boat, man. But 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 God warned him of things not yet seen, and, and, and Noah moved with fear. That's respect or reverence for God, man. Prepared an ark. To the saving of his house. Yeah. You hear what that said? Man, I, I, I don't want my house, this house, my home, any of it, the house of God. I don't want it ever to not be saved or to be a position where it feels like it's drowning. I know a lot of people in ministry that are in that position, man. But faith, by faith.
faith, Noah, being warned by God of the things going, prepared an ark to the saving of his house. What do I need to prepare for the saving of my house? What do I need to prepare and hear from God for the saving of here, man? What do we need to hear God from for? It might say something you've never heard, experienced, did, but God says you're going to be doing it, man. And we got to start to act. That's that gift of faith. It took a gift of faith to begin to cut trees and build and have it the exact dimensions that God said. Then get two of every animal. I got five animals in my house. I can't even get them to do anything I want. <laughs> Let alone every two of every animal on the face of the earth to get in this ark, man. But he had faith. I mean, the story sounds absolutely insane if you think about it. But it tells us in Hebrews 11, 7, that's what happened, man. Yeah. And the gift of faith expects the impossible. If you come in expecting, I say this in marriage counseling a lot, don't expect anything from your spouse. People are like, oh, and they get so <laughs> mad at that. I'm like, if you expect her to do this, that, and the other, or him, you're going to set yourself up for failure. Because what if they don't do it one day? You're going to be upset. You're gonna, I have a hope that as they grow with God and as I grow with God, I'm going to meet needs and I'm going to do things. But I expect uh, yeah. through faith the impossible every single time we meet in church. Amen. Why do I get excited about this, man? Why does my heart, why am I passionate about it? Because I'm literally expecting the impossible as I speak, as we pray, as we worship. I'm expecting your chains to fall off. There's no one that's ever came here where I haven't expected that. Amen. God, because you're God, you're good. And I've said this on the documentary and I've said it publicly many times. Even nationally I've said it. There's nobody ever that I've ever seen or will I ever see that if they try what we teach, if they put in the effort, man, their life's not going to drastically change for the better. Right. No one else on that national stage could make any such promise. But yeah. I said, I know because I expect God to do the impossible. Right. And the only way it won't happen is if they reject it or they choose not to believe it, man. Right. Other than that, their life is changing, period, yeah. man. Yeah. Because that's who God is. I expect that from God. Amen. I expect the impossible, man. It says through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she just and faithful who promised. She believed God for the impossible. Matt was talking about that the other day. She was how old? She was, she was like, she was, was she in her 90s or something like that? She was Sarah, 90. when she conceived 80. Yeah, old. <laughs> She was old, man, way past the year of, of being able to conceive and menopause. She even nursed the child, yeah. right? Believe God for the impossible. She made the hall of faith, Hebrews 11, 11, man. And, and, and you see it, she made the hall of faith. The gift of faith is going to enable you to, to give beyond your natural ability. I can't give any more. Even right now than what I'm I hear Alicia say this often and, 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 and I think of her when I think of this scripture in Hebrews eleven seventeen. It says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Man, how many got kids? Can you imagine praying for this son and God gives you this promise? And then he says, I want you to go up and, and I want you to sacrifice him. Put him on an altar, raise your knife, get the wood together. He's even going to carry the wood. Get it together, go up there. And you know what? I, I read this when I was young one time, and young in my faith. And, and, and when the angel cried out to him, he said, Abraham, Abraham. And I started thinking about my life. And the only time someone said my name twice like that is when I was so bent on, it usually wasn't good. This was a good thing. But when my mom said, John. Joshua David. I knew that, man, okay, I'm one track minded, I'm focused, and they're trying to get my attention. And it spoke to me in that moment. And God said, Abraham was so focused on doing what God called him to do, even though it was beyond his natural ability to even fathom crucifying his son. He was able to go and by faith, by faith, Abraham, when he was trying to offer him up, but God spoke and provided last minute, gave him a ring. He didn't have to do it. But man, his faith. That went even that allowed him to give my only son beyond your natural ability, man. And Alicia reminds me of that. She gives. And I see a woman that goes and has kids and a husband that's been laid up for almost two years, man, and go and go and go. And because of that faith, man, she believes that God's going to give her the ability to go here and help this one and this one and the kiddos and her husband and all of it, man. And it blows my mind if there was a hall of faith written today. And Jody has done some things, man, that, that I've watched that, that would give her a place in the Hall of Faith. 
Dave has done some things, and I'm like, yep, that would be right there in today's Hall of Faith. I keep on myself. Alicia had done things and, and, and changed, man. I remember when, 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 you came, when you came back here. I mean, that, that, that literally, I know you experienced God before. And I know you accepted Christ as your Savior before. But to just give up everything, walk away and come in here without anything and being in that basement and not knowing what was going to go on and how it was going to work, man. And I'm watching God bless you and restore yeah. a family, man, because of this. It was beyond your natural ability to say, I'm going to go in here with no money, with no nothing and live in this basement. What are you talking about? But he was able to give of himself and say, you know what? I'm doing this, man. There's so many testimonies I can give you, but one is George Mueller was absolutely amazing, man. He started, I don't know exactly, I watched the movie on it, but it's been a while and read the book. But George Mueller believed God so much beyond his natural ability. He, he started orphanages and started helping children. And there was times where he would grow and grow and God would give them a building and children would fill it. And they literally had zero food to give these kids and it was mealtime. And he didn't turn the kids away. He said, bring the children in. And he would pray. And he would pray. He would say, God, this is what you called to. And every single time, God would feed them. And they never missed a meal. And he believed God for money. So many things where God just provided. He was able to give beyond his natural ability. There was no way he was able to do what God has called him to do on paper. Because he didn't have it. But he did it for years and years and until God to, until God released him and, and took him home, man. He did it. So at times, the, the miraculous way in which provision came was the fruit of faith for him. It was the fruit of the gift of faith. Faith that, that, that was a manifestation of the, of, of the gift of God through the Spirit to believe God to feed many. Many, to provide for many, man. There's so many great missionary people that, that trusted the Lord without, without, without the backing of a denomination. What I mean by that, they, they weren't in assemblies of God. They just followed the call of God and went. They didn't have this church organization saying, we're, we're going to back you. Willie Burton was one. Um, he, he was an evangelistic mission in the Congo. Amazing story. Hudson Taylor had a had a China uh, a China mission, man, and, and crazy. God provided. Uh, there there were so many, man, so many. And a lot of times, the only thing they had was the fruit of faith, was the gift of faith. In those moments, that's what their whole ministry was about. And without that, man, they wouldn't have been able to ever do anything that God called them to do. And it's amazing. So why is it so important to pray for the gift of faith? In closing, why is it so important, man? The same reason 